Hey everyone, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Defense today. For those of you who are responsible for monitoring and managing the threats to your workloads to secure your Kubernetes environment, your serverless environment, your containers, multi-cloud, whatever it may be, then you should be using ThreatStriker. ThreatStriker offers you workload protection, allows you to secure your containers, provides you vulnerability management, and most importantly, compliance and security observability. Security observability when it pertains to containers is being able to monitor and inspect that telemetry of traffic going between your containers that are talking to each other. So the east-west traffic between containers, a lot of organizations don't have visibility into that traffic. When an adversary gains a foothold on your network, when they get that beachhead, what's the first thing that they're going to do? They're going to attempt to pivot around within the environment from container to container. And a lot of organizations don't have the tooling to be able to see into that traffic, to get that network telemetry. Threat Striker lets you do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. Let's just start from the top here. I, I like to set my uh, timing to show all. Uh, I believe it's gonna default you to the last 30 minutes and then your refresh rate of 30 seconds if you wanna you know, change that or either make that faster or slower, uh, you can do that. So this is the cloud view that we're in right now. Um, in the top right hand corner, you're going to see the number of cloud providers that you're currently monitoring in your environment, the number of containers. So in this case, we've got 31 containers here, uh, container images, the number of actual hosts, the number of Kubernetes deployments, um, your namespaces and pods. So all of this is an actual interactive map. So we can go in here, we can click on Azure, we see East US, we can click on AWS, we can see US East 2, um, and you can of course fly around within this environment. Here's Google Cloud, uh, and then of course you have everything, at least a, an, an illustration of, of everything that's reachable from the internet. Okay, so what am I the most excited about with Threat Striker is the threat graph. Um, so this is basically what's going to show you all of the threats in your environment and these little callouts, if you will, are the high, medium, and low uh, vulnerabilities that are actively being identified within the environment. So here I can say, I can very easily go in here and in the AWS cloud, I've got 386 uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, in Azure, I have 725 high. So, um, you know, obviously now I want to take a look at Azure and find out what's going on. Um, but here we can see the number of AWS S3 buckets, the number of compute instances. Here's the Azure storage accounts. Um, and then GCP Cloud SQL instances. So if we dig into the AWS S3 bucket, we can actually see the number of compliance issues. We've got 93 compliance issues on this, uh, and then SAS charts, we've got 93. So if we click here, uh, you can actually see a list of all the compliance issues um, that are happening with that instance. And everything is gonna be a new pop-up window, so you can just close those out. So we've got our S3 buckets here, the compute instances. Uh, here we've got 33 compliance issues here. If we click here on the Windows agent, uh, you can see all the issues here. Um, the reason, all of the details regarding the node information, the control ID, the description, uh, all of that is here and available for you. Now let's close this out. The compute instances again, uh, this is the number of vulnerabilities. If we click on that, it'll take us right to our list of critical severity vulnerabilities. Um, in the package, the description, and the actual link uh, for more information on that vulnerability. So if we click on it, um, we can see the severity, we can see the details, um, the CVE attack vector, uh, a description, uh, and all versions of app armor mount rules are accidentally white and when compiled. So, you know, you've got all the information on the vulnerability here. So here in our SQL instances, we've got 15 compliance issues again, um, and details on those compliance issues. So one of the most exciting things about Threat Striker for me compared to, for example, Threat Mapper, which is something that's not available in the free open source version, is the vulnerability management and being able to actually prioritize them. 
I really feel like gone are the days of these massive, you know, thousand page Nessus vulnerability reports and trying to figure out based on those CVEs, you know, which ones you should try and remediate first. Uh, you know, this actually provides uh, some, you know, method to the madness. It, it really, it's, it organizes the chaos in your vulnerability management. So here we have the most exploitable vulnerabilities right now. There's a thousand in there, 124 critical. So if I click on that, I can go into the top vulnerable running containers uh, and see those top vulnerable running hosts. Um, if we go back up here, so every time I click on something, it's gonna create a new filter dynamically, right? So here again, you are all the severities. Um, this is just a you know circular view of that for the most exploitable vulnerabilities. These are the vulnerability scans and the unique vulnerabilities associated with them. And then um, the runtime bill of materials. We've all been hearing about that in the news lately pol with politics and, and the requirements around bill, you know, bombs and S-bombs. So here are the list of the CVEs uh, based on criticality um, or severity. So here we've got you know a critical severity vulnerability and Apache struts. Um, and uh, this was last seen seven months ago. So again, it allows us to go in here and immediately just start working on vulnerability remediation and trying to figure out how to actually prioritize which ones we should work on remediating first. Uh, if there's an exploit that's been published in the wild for vulnerability, we actually link to it. So here is a direct link to the Metasploit module for that. And this is uh, paginated, so you can flip through here the different pages in accessing all the vulnerabilities that have been discovered in the environment. This it, secret scan is actually super cool. Um, what you can do with the secret scan is it actually will scan your containers looking for basically hard-coded secrets. Um, you know, you've got all of your secrets that have been found here uh, and then in a tabular view um, and then whether or not those particular scans passed or not. Uh, these are just, um, again, rated by criticality of high, medium, or low. Um, and then, so if you want to drill down into the high, you can hear you've got an SSH password that's been found, um, an AWS access key, an AWS account ID, uh, username and password, and a URL, um, and uh, just continue to drill down into that data. So here within this screen is the compliance scans. Uh, so we can either start a manual scan against this account ID uh, or view previous scan results. Uh, we can also view inventory. So I'm a big believer in you can't protect what you don't know you have, as many of you know. So this gives us the ability to actually pull up an inventory for that. As you see here. These are all of the image registries that we can perform vulnerability scans against and all the supported integrations that we have today. So I, you know, I'm again, I'm super excited about this threat graph. It, it really changes things when it comes to having a holistic view of your multi-cloud environment related to vulnerabilities that you need to immediately, you know, triage or, or remediate first, and then in line with the number of compliance issues that you may have found. Uh, being able to go in here and immediately see that I have 725 critical vulnerabilities in my two to compute instances, that's a real problem for me on the blue team, right? So I can immediately go in there and drill on that and just start addressing and remediating these buffer overflows. So that's it. I just want to do a quick dive into the threat graph capabilities for Threat Striker as well as the vulnerabilities for vulnerability management. Um, I am super excited about my new role as the Chief Evangelist for Defense. So this is definitely the first of many videos to come. So I will see you in the next video.